Okay, so women are uniquely designed to conceive and give birth. Welcome to humanity, right? So women are susceptible to problems that do not occur in men. Obviously, different sets of plumbing have different reactions to things, okay? So, A and P review, there's two, when we get into the, the genitalia of the female anatomy, there's an external and an internal. Okay, so the external female genitalia, the vaginal opening, the labia majora, labia minora, the clitoris, and the perineum. Okay, oh, there's gonna be lots of pictures in here, by the way. So, perineum, space between the rectum and the vaginal opening. Labia minora is the labia directly closest to the vaginal opening with the uh, labia majora also being called the vulva. Okay, so that's the space around it. Um, and obviously they have their urethra. For those of you guys, guys in here, there's two holes. They urinate out of a different hole. Okay, that blows people's minds from time to time. So getting into the internal. Okay, there's ovaries, right? The primary internal female reproductive organ lie on each side of the lower abdomen and each one produces an ovum, right? Or ova, if we wanna get plural. The fallopian tubes connect to the ovaries, which is also the connecting point from the ovaries to the uterus. Now with the ovaries, where in the abdominal cavity do they sit? Sit, sheesh. What was it? Retroperitoneal, yeah, they're in the back, right? They sit in the back there. So the uterus, a muscular organ where the fetus grows, important point to know, the cervix, that is the narrowest point of the uterus, okay, it's at the base of the uterus, and that's what opens directly into the vaginal canal, okay? And then the vagina is the outermost cavity of the woman's reproductive system, and that's also what forms the lower part of the birth canal. We'll talk about OB and delivering babies, uh, not next week, because that's benchmark week, but the week after. Okay, so a little anatomy, right? So we have the, um, the ovaries producing the eggs through the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube floats down, right, and connects to that uterus. And then that's how, what it looks like there uh, inside of the actual anatomy. And then once again, cervix, the narrowest point, okay? Think of that as kind of like the sphincter between the vaginal canal and the uterus, okay? So, Ovulation and menstruation begin in puberty. Onset of, men of menstruation is called menarche, or menarche, or menarche. I don't know how to pronounce that one, but menarche, okay? Hint, hint, wink, wink, that is gonna be a term you're gonna wanna remember, okay? Now, it says here occurs between ages of 11 and 16. Old PowerPoint. So, because, at least in our country, because we've been putting so many hormones and so many preservatives into our food, Girls are actually starting their menstrual cycle a lot younger. The, long, the youngest I've heard of is nine. Okay, so they're starting menstruation at a lot earlier ages just because of the hormones and a lot of the stuff in our food. Um, but yeah, puberty, right? Onset of puberty. Women continue ovulation and menstruation until menopause around age 50. Now, um, I'm pretty sure most of the, at least the guys in here have also heard of menopause at some point or another in their life. Now, one thing I want you guys to know is that really consider the age, right? Age 50. So if you're dealing with a woman who's having vaginal bleeding and they're over the age of 50, don't just ask, when was your last cycle? Because they're going to say, honey, I haven't bled for years. I know because I have asked that question and felt really stupid, okay? So just keep that in mind. So each ovary produces an ovum in alternating months. This is known as ovulation. Okay, the, produce, the production of an ovum is ovulation. And so each ovary alternates. It's one after the other, okay, alternating months. Now, when we're talking about the fertilization of these eggs, the forming of a zygote, that's what that's called when the sperm meets the egg is a zygote. So sperm's deposited from the male penis, passes through the cervix to, uh, to the uterus, and then from the uterus it actually goes through there up into the fallopian tubes. Okay, now at this point, as they're ovulating, the egg is moving in the fallopian tube, so that's where the sperm and the egg will meet. Okay, at that point, once they've formed that zygote that is now a fertilized egg, it's gonna float its way down into the uterus and implant onto one of the walls, okay, or attached to the uterus. Um, now, if it doesn't get there, say that that zygote stays in the fallopian tube, what is that called? We talked about it a little bit 
What was it? Ectopic pregnancy, right? And remember, ectopic pregnancy is the only surefire treatment is an abortion, right? It is a life threat to both the fetus and to the woman. Now, if fertilization does not occur within about 14 days of ovulation, the lining of the uterus begins to separate and menstruation occurs for about a week. The term for that separation of the lining is called sloughing. It's S-L-O-U-G-H-I-N-G. It does not make any sense when you spell it, but sloughing is what it's called. Um, sloughing is a term we'll also use if you see someone who gets like really bad burns. Like you might, anyone ever heard of what's called a degloving injury in here before? Yeah, when their skin, like basically their skin is a glove and they take their glove off. Um, when you see skin that's like broken away from that muscle tissue and starts falling down, that's called sloughing also. Okay. Uh, and the process of ovulation and menstruation controlled by female hormones, estrogen, progesterone being two of them. So a little bit of patho, right? So causes of gynecologic emergencies vary. So we're going to talk anywhere from STDs to trauma, right? Um, and like I told you guys, we are going to get into sexual assault, so it is going to get a little heavy here for a second near the end. So PID, this kind of came up in the last lecture we did on Monday um, near the end, right? So PID is an infection of the upper organs of reproduction in females, right? Um, so the upper, the upper organs would be the ones, obviously their, their uterus, fallopian tube, cervix, or not cervix, rather uterus. Okay, now can result in increased risk of ectopic pregnancy or sterility, and the most common sign is generalized lower abdominal pain. So with PID, you will see this frequently in sexually active women, okay? Um, it's an infection that has the tendency to spread its way upward. So the, the, there's two signs that you'll see, okay? The, one, the first most common one being lower generalized abdominal pain, the next one is what we call the PID shuffle. If you watch them walk, they're uncomfortable. They kind of walk like this. They kind of swing their leg. They don't really bend their knees, okay? Because that driving of their legs forward causes discomfort. So they kind of swing them wide. Um, like I said, usually with sexually active women, I've only had one case that I know for sure was PID, brought her out of a clinic. Uh, based on the very limited history I got from her. She was pretty sexually active that weekend, um, and it sounds like this was not new to her. So um, definitely made sense, especially when we saw her start to walk and she was doing this and she's very uncomfortable. It's really generalized. Like when I say generalized, I mean like diffuse pain. It's just all over, okay? But usually in the lower sections. So STDs. STDs can lead to more serious conditions such as PID. So they get an STD down in the vaginal canal. It spreads its way upward to the upper reproductive organs in the female anatomy, causing PID. So first one, chlamydia, the most common STD caused by bacteria, usually mild or absent symptoms, and then can spread to the rectum and progress to PID as well. So just keep that in mind, this can go into a different space, not just the vaginal canal, not just the urethral opening in males. Males get chlamydia too. Now, nice thing is bacterial. We have antibiotics. We can kill bacterial buggies, okay? Um, and then just think about the environment that bacteria grows, right? Warm, damp, dark. A urethra hits all three of those marks, okay? Uh, the next one, most common vaginal infections can be bacterial vaginosis. So it affects women's 15, fit women's, women 15 to 44. Normal bacteria in the vagina is replaced by an overgrowth of other bacteria. And if untreated, can progress to premature birth or low birth weight in pregnancy and then potentially PID as well. Okay, so anytime there's any sort of infection, especially in the external reproductive organs in females, more particularly in females, okay, their anatomy sets them up for failure a little bit there. Um, any of these can progress to PID, okay? And then premature birth and low birth weight, those two things are often tied together. Babies born early don't weigh very much typically. Um, and then just keep in mind that the vagina, like a lot of our skin, we have bacteria on our skin, helps keep a normal homeostatic relationship with our body, okay? Um, 
the vagina is no different. There is a specific bacterial set that is down there. There's specific pH content that's down there, right? And so we wanna make sure that we're not losing the good bacteria with this overgrowth. Uh, and the last one, gonorrhea. Grows and multiplies rapidly in warm, moist areas of the reproductive tract. So women, the cervix, uterus, fallopian tubes, and then in, and, u, and urethra, and then in males, the urethra. Obviously, we've got a little less plumbing downstairs. So if untreated, can enter the bloodstream and spread to other parts of the body. Does anyone know the nickname for gonorrhea? What was it? The clap. Yeah. Has anyone heard of super gonorrhea? So super gonorrhea is antibiotic resistant gonorrhea that is now in Southeast Asia. And honestly, this is a personal thing, I think is a real missed opportunity. They call it super gonorrhea. Yeah, it sounds scary, but I think a better nickname would be the applause. You know, like there's the clap and then you got the applause. It's just like, oh, that's worse, man. I don't know, it's just personal, but real missed opportunity. Okay, so vaginal bleeding. This is gonna be a call type you will see from time to time. Okay, so it can be something like abnormal menstruation. So menorrhea is gonna be menstruation. That's the med term. So if you see the term dysmenorrhea, usually it means difficult or painful menstruation. Okay, menstruation though it does cause pain is not necessarily painful. Um, it causes more like a cramping sensation. My, I don't know, I don't really know, never had them. But um, from my understanding, it's not the pain in the vaginal area. Uh, the vaginal trauma is possible, ectopic pregnancy is possible, spontaneous abortion is possible. Spontaneous abortion, no, someone know another term for spontaneous abortion? A miscarriage. a miscarriage, yeah. So when a woman is carrying the baby and then they have that miscarriage, that is a spontaneous abortion. And then things like cervical polyps or cancer can cause vaginal bleeding, right? If you have a mass, mass being like a tumor, in that vaginal canal, it's taking up space, it's rubbing on things it shouldn't be rubbing on, it's taking too much space up, can cause bleeding, okay? Okay, so one thing I will say with the assessment, I'm not gonna go into it deep like I never do, but what I will say is that keep this thing some frame of reference, right? We're potentially dealing with someone on the worst day of their life, come in empathetic, okay? Come in compassionate to the situation, um, be professional with the whole thing. But then think about other circumstances, right? If we're dealing with somebody who is, you know, a, a minor, 15 to 18 year old girl, right? Do you think they're gonna tell you their sexual history in front of their parents? Probably not, right? So is this, a, so this is a situation where you might need to get them to the ambulance. Let's have an opus, open and honest conversation. Let's go to the office, right? Your ambulance is your office. Um, or if we're gonna be in the house, right? Might be that same situation. If I'm gonna be in that room with the patient, I'm going to then take this door, I'm gonna open it to right about here and I'm gonna have my partner stand right here, okay? That way we can have an open, honest conversation, parents are out of the way, but if something sideways goes on, they start making claims, you have your partner here who can immediately debunk some stuff. Okay, there are people out there who will try to trick first responders with sexual assault charges, it does happen. Um, I've had one real experience with that. It wasn't with me, it was with uh, a student that I was training. He's now a medic with the uh, gal was getting arrested and then basically get her in the back. I got her to chill out a little bit. As soon as we close the door and roll her in, the side door's open. There's only that, that student medic in there and then she starts screaming, he's raping me, he's assaulting me, he's doing all this, that, the other. So then everyone, of course, runs to that door and he's like, nope, not doing nothing. Like, hands out the door. Like, nope, not me. So... Uh, just keep that in mind, okay? Keep yourselves protected, keep yourselves safe. You can't put yourself into some legal gray area if you're not careful, okay? Uh, make sure you're seen safe. Remember, they can involve large amounts of blood, okay? And just a little bit of blood on the ground looks like a lot of blood. If you were to take an eight ounce cup of water and pour it on a linoleum floor, it looks like a lot of water, okay? Now, water's clear. Obviously, you're not gonna see every little bit of it. Blood is obviously not clear, so a little bit on the floor is gonna look like a lot. Um, and then, if you're worried about uh, assault, get police in line. We'll talk about that as we get further down the road. Uh, da -da -da -da. Sometimes, it, yeah, that's pretty sensical. Not a lot of changing. I would say get a history, right? Do your best. Now these history questions are gonna be extremely personal. They're gonna be uncomfortable, right? When was your last menstrual cycle? Was it heavier or lighter than normal? Was it painful? 
are you early, are you late, right? Different questions that we can ask <clears throat> to get a little more perspective, okay? Um, you guys have seen enough movies, you've been adults long enough now to know that if a woman says they're late, that usually means a baby's coming to some extent, right? Or at least that's the implication of it, right? So having that, that knowledge, if we're asking about menstrual cycles, oh, I'm three weeks late. Okay, if you're taking a pregnancy test, right? That's the next question we can ask off that, okay? The big thing, protect their dignity, right? Make sure that you're giving them the dignity they deserve. Um, so if they're bleeding, what caused it? How long has it been going on? If they've gone through sanitary pads, how many? And then associated signs and symptoms such as syncope, lightheaded, right? Think about what happens if we start losing blood, okay? They're gonna start losing that, their consciousness is gonna be a little bit scattered, okay? Uh, and then ask about birth control, okay? That's a big one. Now, birth control is a good question to ask for another condition and I've mentioned it, I know I've mentioned it. It's good to ask for another condition, specifically in females, obviously, but it's a lung condition. Any guesses? Pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism. Remember what I said about birth control, the, the pill birth control? It, it throws off women's hormones so bad that, that it can start tweaking their clotting factors and it can predispose them to PEs. Yeah. Is that why it says um, to not smoke? I don't know. I don't know. I could see that maybe playing a role because if you think about like what smoking does over time too, right? Like atherosclerosis, the tightening up of vessels. It, maybe. That would make sense. Also, I like your sweatshirt. I got questions for you, but we'll talk later. Um, <laughs> so secondary assessment, right? Make sure we're getting hands on. You are going to have to palpate the area. Now, that's kind of a circumstantial thing. We'll talk about it when we get to sexual assault. but just kind of bluntly putting it as a male, if a woman was sexually assaulted by a male, who do you think the last person they want to see is, right? It's a male, right? So if it's an assault, maybe we limit our physical contact. Um, a little different for females, right? You guys have a different comfort level with each other, or at least suspected, right? If we can line genders up, we can line genders up, it'll be helpful. But make sure you're checking as best you can. Uh, most people who are just having vaginal bleeding not related to an assault are going to be okay with you pressing on their belly, okay? Uh, if we see visible bleeding, we got to deal with that. And then mental status, make sure we're, we're keeping up on that, okay? Double check it. Now, when it comes to the physical exam, we do not need to visualize the genitalia, okay? Unless the patient is really forthcoming with concerns about maybe damage or injury to the genitalia, we're not going to look, okay? When it comes to things like uh, bleeding, we're just gonna use our gauze pads. We're gonna use our big abdominal pads. We're gonna give them to the patient. They can hold their own pressure. Now, do you think we're gonna put any direct pressure ever to stop vaginal bleeding? We're not gonna stop any bleeding, right? It's inside of their, uh, their abdomen. By putting pressure, you're not stopping. We don't know what we're stopping, right? So pressure's not gonna help, but they, they can hold that gauze. They can soak up the blood. Now, when they're done with that gauze pad, you are not throwing it away you're throwing it in between their legs on the cot, okay? Reason being, when you get to the hospital, they're gonna wanna see how many of these pads they go through because if they need to give blood, they can actually see how much blood was lost, okay, from those pads. Um, older ladies may have concerns with hormone stuff, okay? Cancer, pelvic floor collapse is a big one, same with urinary incontinence. So as we get older, that pelvic floor is the muscles kind of in that perennial area. And as we get older, if you're not strengthening them, strengthening them over time, they can get weaker and start to dome downwards. Um, and that can be also tying into urinary incontinence. Okay. Um, da -da -da. Nope, you're not gonna observe. If you don't have to, you won't. Five to 15. Okay, let's get into care. So maintain their privacy as much as possible. Remember, this is gonna be something uncomfortable for everybody involved, okay? If you're in a public place, move them to the ambulance. If we're in their home, maybe we you know, keep the door open like I was saying, and if we can, let's line a female up with the female patient, okay? Specific with these ones, okay? Women have a better understanding of the physiology and anatomy of a woman's body because obvious reasons, right? So they can help out a little bit more. Now that's not always the case. You don't really have a choice. Either you're gonna be male, male, female, male, female, female, right? It's kind of luck of the draw. If it's male, male, do your best, 
okay? Just remember you're always gonna be better being, uh, or you're gonna be better off being empathetic, compassionate in the moment, right? Try to push your discomfort down. Uh, use sanitary pads to absorb blood, right? If they have pads and they wanna bring pads, you can do that, or you can just use your gauze pads. Use the abdominal ones, not the little four by fours. You're gonna go through 150 of those things. May as well use the big one, okay? Um, now, with females, their external genitalia has a rich nerve supply, okay? I think like last time I saw the number, it was something like 8,000 times more nerve supply than male genitalia, okay? So their injuries are gonna be painful, okay? Just keep that in mind. Now, treat external lacerations with moist, sterile compresses, and we never pack or place dressings into the actual vagina, okay? Um, there's only two times that we're gonna insert, the, uh, insert anything, and that's gonna be during childbirth, okay? It's gonna be your fingers in very specific moments, uh, but we'll talk about that in a couple weeks. Okay, so assessment and management, PID. So they're gonna complain to that generalized abdominal pain, okay? Usually starting during or just after menstruation, okay? And then maybe made worse by walking, which is why they, like I said, they do that little shuffle, okay? As they bring their knees up, causes discomfort. For treatment, there's not a lot we're gonna do, okay? They need antibiotics, they need to go to the doctor. There's not a lot that we can do. These women typically is gonna be a non-emergent transport. Now that said, PID is a bacterial infection. So if left untreated, what can that progress to? Sepsis, right? So you're gonna have to play that game a little bit. Is this something where we have time, you know, we can go slow or are they progressing into sepsis? They have not gotten treatment they need, they are progressing forward. Now I know a lot of that seems very sensical. If you're having problems, you're gonna to go to the doctor. Remember the demographics we cater to, okay? And especially if we're dealing with like the unhoused or homeless population, right? They might not get the care they need. They might not seek it out, okay? So you're gonna see some stuff from time to time. Okay, let's bring the temperature down. Sexual assault and rape. So um, one in five women report being raped, one in three report being sexually assaulted. Okay, so EMTs treat victims of sexual assault, you're gonna face a lot of issues here. Okay, and there's legal issues on top of the treatment, on top of just societal or socio issues, right? Talking to somebody after they've had sexual assault is gonna be difficult. So remember, they're having an awful, awful day, potentially worst day of their life. Give them the dignity they deserve, okay? Now remember, you may be the first person the victims had contact with after their encounter, okay? So professionalism, tact, kindness, and sensitivity, okay? Once again, if they were assaulted by a male, the last person they wanna see is gonna be another male, okay? So be as patient as you can and be as kind as you can and try to work through this. Now, I know we're talking gynecologic. Women definitely do get sexually assaulted, get raped, right? That does happen. I also wanna put it out there that males also get sexually assaulted and raped, okay? So this is not just obviously more often to, free, to women, but I want you guys to have that kind of open mind concept, okay? Just because they're a male does not mean they cannot be sexually assaulted. It does happen. Uh, I think I told you the story about my friend getting drugged in that bar, right? It happens. So keep yourselves safe out there. So be aware of drugs used to facilitate the sexual assault or rape, right? Remember my friend's story, right? He got a benzo, but then there's things like GHB, um, Ruflin, right? If possible, give the patient options of being treated by a female EMT if possible. Now this is not the kind of thing that I would try to request another unit for. If you're a double male unit and you show up, don't just be like, well, we need a female here because you just never know who the next unit coming in is gonna be, right? You can't guarantee it's gonna be a female. You're just gonna have to get through that uncomfortable portion on your own, okay? Tact, integrity, dignifying. So your focus should be providing medical treatment to the patient, offering psychological care, preserving evidence, take history, and produce a patient care report. Now, a couple of things. Medical treatment, right? In my experience, a lot of these sexual assault cases did not want to go to the hospital. I got a lot of refusals out of this. Not because I wanted them, but because they just didn't want to go. Ada County is now offering a secondary location to take people to. Uh, specifically these women, a place called Faces of Hope. It's downtown on 5th and Myrtle. 
Um, it is a battered women's shelter. So I would offer that one up too to all of them. Not a single time they'd take me up on it. I never have been there before, but I had the option and I offered it all the time. So keep that in mind. The people who are there, they're all women RNs. So it's, it's a little bit more of a um, comfortable environment for the female. Now preserving evidence, this is kind of a cruelty, but it's a very necessary thing. Okay, if somebody was raped, sexually assaulted, they're not allowed to bathe, they're not allowed to change clothes, they're not allowed to douche, they're not allowed to defecate, urinate. Okay, the reason being is if there's potentially cellular evidence of who this person was that committed this atrocity, um, then they're going to, they're gonna get that, right? They need to do a rape kit. So it's kind of a cruelty. If it was me in this situation, I for sure would wanna bathe, but at the same time, it makes sense why we don't, okay? Uh, take history and then produce a patient care report. Now, one big thing I want you guys to note, this is not gonna be on a benchmark, but this is a real life professionalism thing. When you are charting sexual assault, we never ever write the word rape, okay? When we are charting a sexual assault, we never use the word rape. Reason being, rape is a legal term, okay? Now, if you say in your chart, uh, patient was raped, the first question that attorney's gonna ask you is, well, did you see her get raped? Well, no, then how do you know for sure, right? They got a client to defend too, remember that, okay? We use sexual assault. We do not want to accidentally screw our patient out of legal justice, right? Because we use the wrong verbiage in our charts. Okay, so we'll chart all of, anytime there's a rape or potential rape, we chart it as sexual assault, okay? That'll save you guys some legality down the road and also is kind of, it helps out our victims, okay?